What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is my 2020 most anticipated releases video where I'm just going to share with you all of the titles that I am so excited for. I will have a link to the Google Doc that I created of all of the titles so that you can go and check them out if you are interested. In the doc, I've also linked my Goodreads shelf of my most anticipated releases, which is basically this video, but I think I've left out a couple, so I also have that link. And I also linked a trans and voices list where you can just find titles that are trans on voices that have come out or that are coming out in 2020. That's all the like information that I really needed to mention. This is one of my favorite videos to film so I'm so excited to finally get to film it. If I miss anything that you may be anticipating, either I'm not anticipating it or I don't know about it, so feel free to comment down below. Let's just get started because I have so many books to share and I'm so excited. First I'm starting off with January and these are all the titles coming out on January 7th. 7 is a very popular number throughout the year, but first starting with January 7th, there is Every Other Weekend by Abigail Johnson. This is about Adam and Jolene. Adam is dealing with the aftermath of his oldest brother's death. Since then, his life is constantly changing and his father moves out. And for Jolene, she's an aspiring director and she's dealing with her parents' divorce. So Adam and Jolene end up meeting in the same apartment. This book has everything that I love, grief, a dark contemporary, and recently I've discovered that I love books set in apartments. I can't wait to get to this book. I'm definitely going to make it a priority this year to get to it. Next, I really hope that this is a friends to lovers because I love that so much. This is We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding. She is the author of The Summer of Jordi Perez. I think that's what it's called. I haven't read that yet. I started some of it but never finished it, but this sounds so good. Queer enemies to friends to lovers or like friends to enemies to friends, to lovers, and I love that so much that it's one of my favorite tropes. And this follows Kat and James, and they used to be childhood best friends, and something happened. The synopsis says a traumatic breakup, like a traumatic friendship breakup. Don't know what that's about. In their senior year of high school, they rekindle their friendship, and if you know me, I love when that happens in books, so I am so excited for this. Next is a graphic novel, and this is The Plain Janes by Cecile Casalucci and Jim Rugg. This is about a girl named Jane who meets other Janes at her school, and they are a whole group called P-L-A-I-N, Plain Janes, and this is so interesting. If you've ever watched the show Recess, that's what it reminds me of because there was like the Ashley's Club and this is basically what it reminds me of. I am so excited for this. It sounds so good and I'm excited to see how I like it. Next is a book that I've already read and this comes out on January 14th and this is Lucky Caller by Emma Mills. This follows a girl named Nina who enrolls in a radio broadcasting class at her high school. A part of this class is to have your own radio show. So she has to group up with some classmates that she's never known before. She ends up being put in a group with this boy named Jamie who she's known since childhood. I have a whole reading vlog on this. I loved it so much and I highly encourage for everyone to pick this up. I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the radio aspects in this book but there's so much more. It's set in an apartment. There is a childhood friends to lovers romance and Nina is dealing with her mother getting remarried and there is just so much more in this book. I really, really enjoyed it. Definitely go over to my reading vlog if you want to know more about it, but I really love this. And last for January is a middle grade that comes out on January 31st, and this is from the desk of Zoe Washington. This is about a girl named Zoe who receives a letter on her 12th birthday from her father who she's never met. She learns he's in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. With that, Zoe wants to investigate, but she has to hide the letters from her family. Aside from investigating her father's case, she's also interning at a bakery and trying to convince her parents to let her audition for the Food Network Kids Bake Challenge. That is one of my favorite shows. I love Food Network. This just sounds so good and I am so excited and I will pick it up. Moving on to February. On February 4th, we have The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. I follow Phil on Twitter and his book sounds amazing. This is a gay sci-fi book and it sounds so good. This follows a 17-year-old boy named Cal who has to relocate from Brooklyn to Houston when his father has to move for work. Cal's father is a pilot who was selected by NASA to go on a mission to Mars. And Cal ends up meeting another astro kid named Leon 
and there's just like, gonna be a gay romance and I'm so excited. This just sounds so good and I just love, I just love it. It just sounds really good. Another book coming out on February 4th is Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Abertali and Aisha Saeed. I haven't heard much about this, but it's Becky Abertali and I will literally pick up anything she writes. And I've heard that this is a politically charged book. That's all I really know about it, but I do want to go into it blind. I love Becky Abertali with all of my heart, so I can't wait for her new book. I haven't heard anything about Aisha Saeed, but I hope that after this, I will want to pick up more of her work. Next is like, I have like top books, like I need this book and there's no surprise that I need this because it is the second volume of The Avant Guards. I love this. I've been talking about it so much. It is a queer basketball comic and it's amazing. When I read the first volume, I was so upset that I finished it because there was just nothing more and I'm just craving more of this story. So I am definitely going to pick this up when it comes out. And it comes out on February 18th. That is all for February. Now moving on to March where there's so many. Spring 2020 is popping with great YA titles. Coming out on March 3rd is actually a book that I've received a Night Gallery arc of and this is only mostly devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. This is about Ollie and Will and it is a Grease retelling but it's also a gay Grease retelling and oh I am so excited for that. I am so excited for this. Grease happens to be one of my favorite movies and I am just so excited to see how Sophie Gonzalez pulls this together. It says that this is a Grease retelling but by reading the synopsis I'm also getting high school musical vibes. Basically Ollie has a family emergency where he has to move across the country and Ollie ends up enrolling in Will's school. Do we have a Troy and Gabriella situation going on here? I think so. I'm so excited to read this and I will definitely share my thoughts thoughts once I read it. Next, also coming out on March 3rd, is The June Boys by Courtney C. Stevens. I only read her contemporary Dress Goes for Small Towns and I really enjoyed it, but this is a thriller about a serial killer. Uh, nope, it's a serial kidnapper. This is a YA suspense thriller about a serial kidnapper who kidnaps three boys from June 1st to June 30th and just, I guess like the case of that, um, just that alone really sold me and the fact that it is Courtney Stevens, I am definitely going to pick it up. Also on March 3rd is The Fire Never Goes Out by Noelle Stevenson. This is her graphic memoir. I discovered Noelle Stevenson in 2019 and I want to read all of her graphic novels because they sound so good and I don't know if she's ever done a memoir before but I'm sure it will be very interesting and I'm definitely going to pick it up. Next is not coming out on March 3rd. <laughs> Next Next on March 10th is one of my favorite authors. This is When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfall. I really enjoyed her book, The Beauty That Remains, so I'm so excited to have another book from her. What's it about? This is about a girl named Cleo who was once friends with a girl named Layla and she has to tutor her and I guess they just rekindle their friendship. The book is written in past and present and that's what I really enjoyed about The Beauty That Remains so I'm definitely going to pick this one up. The last three books coming out in March all come out on March 31st starting with Music From Another World by Robin Talley. I've never read any of her books but I plan to. I just never got around to it. This book is so up my alley. It is set in the summer of 1977 so it is a young adult queer historical fiction and that is what I love. This sounds like the female version of Ziggy Stardust and Me which was one of my favorite books of 2019. So this is about a girl named Tammy who's a lesbian and she feels like she can't be out anywhere but she meets a girl named Sharon who she bonds over about punk music. I love that. And I am just so excited for this book. It sounds amazing. And the last book coming out on March 31st is actually a middle grade that I received from the publisher and this is What Stars Are Made Of by Sarah Allen. This is about a 12 year old girl named Libby who has Turner Syndrome and she knows that most babies aren't born healthy. She worries when her sister announces that she's pregnant and so she wants to enter into this science competition and if she wins she wants to give the money to her sister and her husband to help with the baby and I love that. It sounds so good. Next is April and on April 1st is Rick by Alex Gino. I don't even know what this is about. It's just Alex Gino and I will pick up anything that they write. I'm so excited for this and I kind of want to go into it blind but I feel like I should tell you what it's about. 
This is about a boy named Rick who realizes that his best friend is kind of a jerk. So he learns that he should find his identity apart from his friend. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in this book, but it does say he's just going to explore his gender and sexuality. And our main character from George, Melissa, she is going to be in the book as well, and I am just so excited. Next, on April 7th, I am super excited for this. And this is Girl Crushed by Katie Heaney. She's one of my favorite authors. She normally writes nonfiction, and she wrote one adult book, which I haven't read yet, um, and I probably should get to that. But this is her first YA novel, and it is a queer book, and that's all. That's all I need. It's all I need, and I'm just very excited about it. But I should tell you what it's about. It is about this girl named Quinn, who her best friend and girlfriend dumped her, and now she is a girlfriend and best friend list. Enter Ruby, who is a girl that she starts getting a crush on, and ta-da, <laughs> like that's all that I'm gonna say. I just can't wait to read it because I love Katie Heaney and she's awesome. So I'm very excited to read her YA novel. Next, also coming out on April 7th, is The Lucky Ones by Liz Lawson. This is about a school shooting and it is a thriller and I have just been anticipating this so much. This whole book is about a school shooting that happened to this girl named May at her school and it just is all about the different perspectives of how the school shooting really changed people's lives and this just sounds really good. Um, I don't know why I thought it was a thriller because it's not. This is a young adult contemporary, but this sounds really good. I really love dark contemporaries and I don't feel like there's enough books that focus on school shootings. So I am very excited for this book. Next is Jack Kerouac is Dead to Me by Gay Pausner. I read her book, The Memory of Things, a couple years ago, and I have this book on NetGalley and I am eager to get to it. This is about a girl named Jake L and her parents are just not there for her. Her father has gone away on long-term business and her mother is suffering from disassociative disorder. JL is busy raising tropical butterflies, but enter a older boy who is about to graduate high school, so I guess she's dating a senior, and that is interesting to me. <laughs> Her new boyfriend Max plans to hit the road and leave town after graduation with or without JL, and so she has some decisions to make, and let's hope that she makes the right decision. <laughs> I will let you guys know more of my thoughts before the release date. Also coming out on April 7th is Little Universes by Heather Demetrios. I was lucky enough to get sent an arc of this from the publisher, and this sounds so good. I already talked about it in a book haul last year, but oh, I I am so excited for this and I'm probably going to do a reading vlog on it, but here's what it's about. This is about two sisters, May and Hannah. They lose their parents to a tsunami when their parents are vacationing in Malaysia and their life changes from there. They're forced to move to Boston from sunny California where they live and start over. And it is their senior year. The book is all about a powerful bond of sisters, so I love a good sister dynamic in a book. So I am so excited to read this and I will have a reading vlog before the release date. The last April 7th release that I am anticipating is the most anticipated of the whole year, and this is Check Please Sticks and Scones by Nagazi Okozo. Ooh, oh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. This is the sequel to Check Please. This is a hockey graphic novel and webcomic about a boy named Biddy who is gay and he is on the hockey team and he is a vlogger and he loves to bake. I loved the first book of this and I'm just so, so excited for the second one. Like I have been waiting for this. I have been waiting for the sequel. I am so excited for it to finally arrive. Next, on April 14th, is one of my favorite authors finally coming back with a book. This is The Lightness of Hands by Jeff Garvin. He wrote The Symptoms of Being Human, and that is my favorite book ever. And this is about a girl who lives in a RV with her dad, who is a deadbeat magician, <laughs> basically. This is about a girl named Ellie who used to have a famous magician father, but on TV he messed up and he could never show his face again. So now Ellie and her dad live in an RV and they perform at birthday parties and bars across the Midwest to make ends meet. 
until Ellie receives a call from a famous magic duo who want her father to be on their live show. And if he does, they will give him $50,000. Ellie knows that her dad would refuse, but she ends up accepting the deal anyway. So we'll see what happens from there. From the synopsis, I feel like this book is going to talk about poverty because it does mention that Ellie has a bipolar disorder that she's not medicated for and her father has a heart condition. I am just so excited to read another book by Jeff Garvin, so this is definitely my most anticipated book of the year. On April 21st is Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer. This is about a girl named Zelda who enrolls in improv camp and she is at the most prestigious camp. She dreams to go to Saturday Night Live and perform and she ends up getting bullied by some of the campers at her camp and I am just excited for this. I love a good camp story and usually when I read them they are just a regular like classic camp where you're overnight for a couple days or like a month or something like that but this is different because it's improv camp so I'm very excited to give this one a try. So on April 21st is Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. She wrote Hot Dog Girl but I didn't read that because I just wasn't interested in it and I didn't think I would enjoy it, but Verona Comics sounds so good. One of my favorite books is Geekerilla, and this book really reminds me of it. It is about this girl named Jubilee who is a cellist and she's preparing for the biggest audition of her life. But her parents are busy with their indie comic shop and really don't pay a lot of attention to her. Um, one day they go to a comic convention and she meets this girl named Ridley. And Ridley has anxiety and Jubilee meets her and it is a romance from there. It sounds really good and I really like the cover. And the last April title is on April 28th and this is We Are the Wildcats by Siobhan Vivian. I love her book Stay Sweet and I just want to read every Siobhan Vivian book ever, so I was so excited that she has a new book coming out. This book is told in 24 hours and through six different perspectives from the girls on the Wildcats field hockey team. They want to take revenge on their coach who is toxic and so that's really all I get from the synopsis. Honestly, it's Siobhan Vivian and I will pick it up, but it's also like a hockey element and I love that so much. Even if it isn't ice hockey, I love all hockey. So I'm so excited for this. Next, moving to May on May 2nd is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and this is a YA thriller. Five years ago, a girl named Andy was killed by a boy named Sal. A high school girl named Pippa picks up the case for her final year project and wants to investigate further because there are speculations that Sal wasn't the person who did it. This sounds really good and like I've said before, I love a good thriller so I'm very excited for this. I feel like there's a lot of thrillers coming out this year and I'm so excited about that. Next on May 5th is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is about two girls and I don't think that they know that each other exists but through the death of their father dying in a plane crash, they both grieve and learn about each other. I love a good book about grief and I know that Elizabeth Acevedo does a really good job writing that and I'm just excited to read this. I'm sorry if I've said that for every book, but it's true. It's currently the next day and I also found a list of some other anticipated releases that I would like to mention, so this is just going to be a process. The next book is one of my most anticipated releases and this comes out on May 12th and this is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. I am just so excited for this book and let me tell you what it's about. Felix Love has never been in love. He's queer, black, and trans, and coming with that, being a marginalized group, he feels like he will never be in love and no one will ever love him. Felix seeks revenge on a classmate when they send him anonymous messages that are transphobic after publicly posting their dead name and pre-transition photos. Felix begins a journey of questioning and self-discovery when he catfishes someone, I think, I think that's what the synopsis is saying. Um, and that starts a love triangle, apparently. I'm just so excited for this. There are so many great own voices books coming out this year, and just think about this title makes me want to cry, <laughs> just because I'm so happy. Next are all the releases coming out on May 26th. I may have gotten some of the publication dates wrong just because Goodreads tells me differently, so sorry if they're not correct, but they should be as correct as I could possibly get them. Here are all the books coming out on 
May 26th. Starting with Say Gold by Tobley McSmith. This one I'm so excited for. This is another Own Voices book and this is about, uh, <laughs> I get why it's called that. That's kind of cool. Um, this is about a boy named Pony who wants to be stealth at his new school in Texas. If you don't know what stealth means, that just means that you kind of pass and nobody really knows you're trans. That's basically it. This is about the new boy at school who starts a relationship with a cheerleader. I'm just so excited for this. Like I said, there's so many Gun on Voices books coming this year, so I highly suggest for you guys to pick them up and read them. Those are the best ones to read and that's all. <laughs> I'm not gonna get onto a tangent because I know I will. Next is I Kiss Alice by Anna Birch and this is about a hate to lovers and this is about two girls, Rhode and Elena. And Rhodes has been at this School of the Arts for a while now and she's been at the top of her class until Elena comes and really messes up her game. And so it's them kind of fighting to compete with each other and little do you know that they are actually friendly online and they both collaborate on a graphic novel. Sparks fly during that process and they have to figure out if they want to stay enemies or pursue a relationship. Next is The Fascinators by Andrew Iliopoulos. Sorry if I said that wrong. This book is pitched as The Raven Boys Meets Simon vs. The Homo Sapiens Agenda because it is about a high school senior who is openly gay and falls in love with his best friend. And there is dark magic elements as well. And that's really all the synopsis tells me, but it does sound really interesting. Next is Camp by L.C. Rosen. And this is about a queer camp called Camp Outland. And I love that. I really love a good camp story and I love when it's a queer camp story. So that is all you need to tell me to reel me in. Next is coming out on May 28th and this is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. I've read her in the past and I really am so excited for this and I just love a good queer retelling. I assume that gender is going to be played with in this story because Juno is a trans woman and one of my favorite retellings is Peter Darling by Austin Chant. So I am just super eager to read this. Moving on to June is one of my most anticipated releases of the whole entire year and this is coming out on June 9th and this is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I I am so excited for this. I don't think anybody understands. I am so excited. I am trying to get an arc of it really badly. I've been in contact. I will get it. I am trying my absolute best to get it because I need it. This isn't even my book and I'm so excited. <laughs> This is about Yajriel, and I'm sorry if I said that wrong. He summoned a ghost and the ghost won't go away. This is a trans ghost story and I I'm so here for it. <laughs> but the ghost he actually summons is a boy named Julian and it is a romance, I'm pretty sure. And I love Aiden and I am so excited for this book. Like, I feel like this is my book and I don't even personally know Aiden and I am just so excited for it. Next on June 16th is You Say It First by Katie Gatugno. I love Katie, she's one of my favorite authors. This is also set in a Philadelphia suburb and I live in a Philadelphia suburb. This book is made for me. <laughs> but this is about a girl named Meg who has been with her boyfriend Mason who she loves. When she's not with her boyfriend, she spends her time phone banking at a local voters registration call center and she ends up meeting a angry person over the phone and it's just like a calling romance kind of thing. So basically this sounds like an enemies to lovers and that sounds really good to me that it's one of my favorite tropes and I am just so excited for this book that is set in my town or just in my area. So I only had two for June. Here is the rest for July. Starting with Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I am so excited and I've probably said that so many times but I am. I'm just gonna say that this is about a haunted house because I personally don't want to know too much about it because that's how I went into the other one, lock every door, and that terrifies me from apartments so now I'm going to be afraid to leave my house and I love that for me. <laughs> also on July 7th is the third book in the Love and Gelato 
companion series, I guess we're calling it. This is Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welsh. This is about a girl named Evie who is sent to Greece to try and connect with her absent father. And I love Jenna Evans Welsh because most of her stories are about that. And I've never, I've never read a book set in Greece, but I've always wanted to go to Greece. So I'm so excited for this. She's very good at writing international books and really captivating you and feeling like you're in the stories. Love and Gelato was one of my favorite books that I've read and I'm just super excited for this book. Another book coming out on July 7th is One Year at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks. I actually just got accepted for this arc, so it's going to be coming in the mail very soon soon and I am super excited for it. I don't know too much about it but Faith Erin Hicks is one of my favorite authors and illustrators so I am sure that I'm going to enjoy this one. This is about a girl named Juniper who wins a scholarship to a boarding school and it's just all about a boarding school and I love a book about a boarding school and I love Faith Erin Hicks so I'm very excited for this. <laughs> There's no other word than excited so. Next, coming out on July 14th, is Love is for Losers by Wick Brueggemann. This is about a 15-year-old girl named Phoebe who thinks that she'll never fall in love, and she kind of thinks that falling in love is for losers, until she starts volunteering at a local thrift shop and meets a girl named Emma, and there is a female-female romance there. This book sounds really great, and the cover is great as well. I feel like YA needs more books that have 14 and 15-year-old protagonists, so I'm very excited for this one. Those were all my July titles and moving on to the last title which comes out on November 10th and this is Zara Hussain is Here by Sabina Khan. This I am so excited for because I really enjoyed The Love and Lies of Rashana Ali, which was her debut in 2019. Zara is put in danger when she is threatened by a, another boy at school who happens to be the star football player and the violence escalates to her home and her family and she has to deal with that. Like I already said, I really enjoyed her debut novel, so obviously I'm going to read this one. <laughs> Those are all of the anticipated releases. Let me know if you are anticipating any of these and I will have the links down below of the Google Doc and my most anticipated releases Goodreads shelf so you can add these to your TBR as well. Thank you all for watching. I have a Patreon if you would like to support me there. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.